Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Back to Ashes. My name is Phoenix. All right, this is Future Me inserting this back into Past Me. It has come to my attention that I accidentally left out two of my members' birthdays, of which I don't normally get on camera to do this, but to me, this is very important. Denise, I am so sorry I missed um, putting your birthday in the last video, so happy birthday on the 12th. And Mana Ash, I don't know exactly the date, but happy birthday as well for August. Cool? Let's get back to our stories. If you are new here and you enjoy what you are hearing, please don't hesitate and hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have you as part of the family. Also, don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll be reminded of every time I upload a video, which happens to be daily. If you are interested in becoming a member or would like to tip me with a cup of coffee, that information can be found down below. With all of that being said, it is now time to go back to ashes. For once we arise from the ashes, we are a bigger, brighter, stronger, and a happier person every day. Sit back, relax, kick back, grab a snack, or tuck in to get warm, and prepare for your dose of vocal melatonin entitled, True Neighbors from Hell. Right after this intro, there will be an ad. Or read the first story, there will be an ad. And after that, there will be no more ads within this video. Disclaimer, this video is for educational and entertainment purposes. There is an older lady that lives across the street from me, and her children live two houses away from her. I see her walking in just her bra and underwear to her children's house about three times a day. I often work from home, and my office faces the street. Since I live on a quiet, dead-end street, maybe she doesn't realize anyone can see her? I've known her well enough to know she isn't suffering from dementia. She and other family members have been walking to each other's houses in pajamas or underwear for at least the past 15 years that I have lived here. In the past, I would occasionally see her walking from one house to another in her underwear, but usually she wore pajamas or something similar. Her daughter, son-in-law, and grandson would also occasionally walk across the street in pajamas or underwear, but not as often as she is doing it now. Recently, I noticed her walking in her underwear about three times a day, and now it's starting to bother me because I just don't like seeing half-naked people. Does anyone have any advice on how to handle the situation? Hello, everyone. Normally, I don't post my business online, but I'm in need of advice. I'm located in New South Wales and have had multiple issues in my rental. I am in a granny flat and someone else rents the main house. I have many issues with the lady in the front house. We call her Jess. This including being called a C-U-N-T on almost a daily basis. I have been threatened many times. I also unfortunately had my pet bunnies poisoned. The day prior, this neighbor had gotten mad at me and said, if I was you, I'd watch my mutt. This being toward my dogs. Luckily, the day my bunnies were poisoned, I had taken my dog to my parents' house for a play date with my parents' dog while I was at work. She was pissed off because she was accusing me of damaging her car. As I was walking past her car with my dog on a lead, her car was parked directly in front of my gate to the entrance of the property. This all started as when this neighbor had first moved in, she had told me she was happy if we shared the driveway, even though it was on her lease, and in exchange, I would get cans for her to cash in from work for her, roughly 100 cans a day. And honestly, I never thought much of it. After six months later, I had multiple instances where my dog kept randomly getting out whilst I was at work. I am a nurse, so it's a little hard for me to just leave to go and get my dog. So I kept having to get family and friends to go over and pick her up every time she'd get out. But 
I could not figure out how she was escaping. So I asked the lady who lived across the road from me, whose cameras see into the front of my house, to check them. And I discovered that Jess was going into my yard and letting her children play with my dog while I was at work, and they had accidentally let her out. The next day, I went and knocked on the door and asked if she was entering into my property, if she could please double-check the gate as my dog kept getting out, and I couldn't afford for her to get injured. During the discussion, I thought we had sorted the issues out, and there were no arguments. I then got a call from my real estate agent that the neighbor had put a complaint in about me parking on her driveway to the side and out of the way. When I received this call, I immediately moved my car onto the street. My other neighbor, an elderly lady we will just call June, had noticed I was parking on the road and had asked what happened. After explaining this, June offered for me to park on her driveway as she doesn't have a car and she doesn't use her driveway. After seeing I was parking on June's driveway, Jess went over to June's house and yelled and screamed at her and pushed the neighbor. Luckily, June's son was visiting at the time, and he kicked her off June's property and called the police. I was at work when all this happened, by the way. Since this incident, there has been constant arguments with Jess, but I honestly just walk away when she starts yelling. Jess then put in a report to the real estate agent, stating that myself and the neighbors were bullying her. I tried to explain that if the other neighbors were saying or doing anything, it had more to do with the situation that had occurred with June, as June has been living on the street for 20 years, and the other neighbors are very protective over June. Since all this happening, I've reported everything to my real estate agent, which they have done nothing. This all started in January just after I signed a new lease for another 12 months. I am now quite scared all of the time. I have installed cameras, but I still just don't feel safe. I also can't leave my dog home alone after my rabbits were poisoned and fear she might try something with my dog. So I now pay a doggy daycare, which is extremely expensive. Does anyone know, is there any way for me to get out of this lease due to safety reasons? My spouse and I rent one half of a duplex that was originally a single family home. The house has an attached two lane driveway and two stall garage that is split right down the middle. Every unit has one side. Something to note is that the driveway is technically long enough to fit three vehicles, but a public sidewalk cuts through the driveway. You can't really fit a car below where the sidewalk is, and obviously, we shouldn't be blocking the sidewalk. The neighbors use their garage for storage instead of parking, so they have two vehicles parked in their driveway, thus filling up their driveway. I park my car in the garage when I'm home. I mainly work from home, but go to the office one to two days a week. And my spouse, who leaves the house for work every day, often parks on the street so we can get my car out if needed. Thus, our side of the driveway is usually empty. When the neighbors first moved in, their guests would sometimes park on our side of the driveway. We approached the neighbors and politely asked for the vehicles to be moved, and they moved them right away and were apologetic. This stopped after a couple of times. Recently, a regular guest of the neighbors is coming over about twice a day and parks right on our driveway. I believe this guest is picking up one of the neighbors and then bringing them home later. But instead of a quick pickup and drop off, the guest often stays parked in the driveway for 10 to 15 minutes. Since there isn't room for this guest to park on their side of the driveway, they use our side instead of parking in the street. 
I get that 10 minutes isn't a huge deal, and I wouldn't be that bothered if it didn't interfere with my coming and going, but lately it has. There's been at least four occasions in the couple past weeks when I'm trying to leave for work or arriving home, and that vehicle is there on my side of the driveway. There's also been some close calls with my own guests or delivery drivers heading over and the neighbor's guest is parking that space for them. I'm also thinking of the fact that this would be bad if there was an emergency and I needed to leave immediately, but was being blocked in. The point of this story is that I'm not sure what to do. The neighbors are well aware that they should not be parking on our side of the driveway, so I'm not sure that approaching them again would solve anything. One time I crossed paths with the guest, and he even acknowledged it and apologized to me. But it keeps happening. I don't fault the guest necessarily. I'm sure it's the neighbor telling them to just pull onto our driveway. I've tried parking my car out on the driveway during the day, far enough down so that a car can't pull in behind me while not blocking the sidewalk. But this isn't ideal. The neighbors are outside a lot, and for certain reasons, I don't always feel comfortable interacting with them alone if I don't have to. I'm not sure calling a tow truck would work since the guest would likely be gone before it would arrive. I might try putting some traffic cones out or using our garbage can to block our side of the driveway, but I wonder if they would just move it. This seems like kind of a petty issue to involve our landlords, but maybe I need to. I might also let go if this was the only issue the neighbors have caused, but it is not. What should I do? All right, you all, I'm going to give my two cents here. Either one, call the tow company anyway. Number two, call the police so they can tag the car. Or number three, go buy some spike strips. I guarantee they'll stop parking there then. <laughs> anyway, here we go. A small confession. A while ago, me and my boyfriend moved to this wonderful apartment. We had been waiting for nine years to get a hold of Elise here, and it is in a very calmer, quiet place than our last apartment. New Year's here, we could see splendid fireworks, but barely hear it indoors. That's how quiet the house is built. The layout of the block is a little bit different. The demographics here are pretty much people who are wanting to move to a house or have downsized from a house. Families that need big apartments, friends sharing, or people who will live here until time to move to the cemetery. We don't have time-limited leases that need renewal. The layout is important for the story, so listen up. There are three buildings, five floors tall, A, B, C, each with two gates on one side of the street, tiny forest area on the other side. That ends with guest parking spaces and a few garages. The buildings form a sort of soft U-shape, and the house B has their garages and leased parking area between the street and the entrance. In front of house A and C, there is an asphalted section for delivery vehicles and bikes parking. This section in front of house B stretches from the street behind the garages in front of B between bushes. That gives the entrance floor tenants a little privacy. Bike parking on one side and a small strip of grass, teeny trees, low bushes and flowers that served as separating the walkway from the parking area on the other side. And then it goes to the street behind more garages. So, the buildings form a U, and in front of house B, there is an asphalted walkway that's shaped like a U, with parking inside the U. House A has their designated parking area on the short sideway, away from the house B, but they have no guest parking. 
all guest parking are down by House C, next to the forest area. The whole big area is designated more for the people who walk, bike, push a stroller, or rides in an electric wheelchair in mind than allowing a car to dominate, so the three houses are not odd when having parking separate. The buildings have handicap accessible apartments, and I knew that there lived at least two people who too often needed emergency assistance in the House B. Description of the area is over. Imagine a warm summer night in the middle of the week. I'm coming home late from evening class and go first by the end of the street in House C. The guest parking area is empty, but the normal quiet night was not really quiet. Oh well, someone might have had a barbecue in the communal grill area. Didn't think too much about it. I walked around the bend at the first gate by House B and see cars and more cars. Not only are there cars on the grass strip, over the bushes, and under the young, tiny trees, there are double parked in front of the gates, and I saw the hoods of two cars parked on the grass area between House B and A. Not a single person is in sight. Nothing is indicating that they are doing anything similar to delivery, and they are just blocking the walkway. I must say, to the driver's credit, they did think about the placements of their cars. From the street looking across the parking area, they would not stand out at first glance, and the cars on the grass between the houses were protected from the street by the garages. Too bad they didn't think about the other residents who lived there. I went home and called the parking company, who sent out other people quickly. I stood looking out from my window, watching them pleading but still getting tickets. The evil inside me was rather pleased with my decision, and I could feel the little demon on my shoulder dancing. The party that the cars belonged quickly died down when the car owners no longer were in the mood. If $10 for an overnight parking fee is too high, then $73.50 in parking tickets per car should sting a bit and kill whatever party spirit existed. Insert evil laughter here. Ha <laughs> ha. Funny thing is that I did not see any cars parked outside like that for many months, even though there were signs of parties. Even overheard some young 20s guys complain about the ticket price the week after on the bus. I smiled behind my mask, I love my mask here in pollen season, and did my best not to be noticed by them. The sad thing about this was, on Saturday night, that week one of the original tenants of House B got heart problems and passed on. The ambulance came quickly, but wasn't able to save the tenant. Don't want to think about how the partner would feel if it had happened while the double-part car was there. I still think about that very nice, sweet old neighbor each time I call the parking company when there are cars in the wrong places. To the owners of the cars that I call the parking company on, I'm a neighbor from hell, but hey, they don't know exactly who I am. To the dog owners, I'm the crazy one who says hi to the dogs before the humans, but for the most part, the neighbors, I'm just the new one in the house. No one knows that I'm making a call when I see a car placed where it shouldn't be, and I will continue to call when necessary. Like just now, when I looked out the window and I see a car parked in front of the door to the bike room. Time to call and be a neighbor from hell. Myself and my mom had just recently moved into our new house about two months ago, and over that time, we had three police calls on her making false claims. 
We live in a gated community, and there are multiple people who are in a sort of gang that harass the caretaker and his wife. They literally just take care of the pool, the garden, etc. Which have now also began targeting my mom. One report was that she was running around the complex and climbing the trees and acting like a lunatic. Even though she has arthritis and spinal issues. Both police and ambulance came, but at the time I was at school. We both knew that whoever called them had intent to send her to a mental hospital or something. Another, which happened two days ago, was that my mom was harassing people, knocking on doors rapidly in a time limit of 30 minutes and peeping through the windows. I was asleep when these things allegedly happened, but my mom told me that all she did that day was walk up to a man, who's the main guy harassing us, to ask about selling our house to him since he's buying multiple properties in the community. He says, mm-mm, too expensive. She goes and walks around the pool, walks back to the house. Group of people standing outside our house, but my mom didn't stop or speak to them and went straight inside. After they dispersed, she brought all of our things outside inside. That was what woke me up, since my bedroom is right above the front door. She moved the bins, and then around 2.30 p.m., she rang me in bed before falling asleep. At like 3 p.m., I was cleaning and noticed three police officers at the gate talking to a woman before they walked back to the main guy's house next to us before coming over to our front door 15 minutes later. I opened it. They said they needed to speak to my mom. I had a suspicion that someone made a false call. I woke up my mom, who was either extremely sleep-deprived or drunk, I don't know, and we spoke to the police. They told us there were numerous calls, linking back to the gang around the community, about her knocking on the main guy's door, harassing people to buy her house, and peeping through windows. My mom was extremely distressed since she has a long history of violence and all of that, and wasn't really making sense with the police, but overall, they just gave her a warning and went off. Now today, my mom planned a surprise for me, and I woke up at like 10.15. Appointment was at 10.30, and so we were rushing. Once we got there, I found out it was a nail appointment, and I'm like, uh, <laughs> I don't want to get my nails done. Sorry, I just don't like anyone touching my feet. Why, uh, why don't you get yours done? To my mom. And so she went to talk to the employee about how much it was. Found out it was a bit too expensive for her, so we canceled the appointment and left. I went to the car, and my mom went into the appliance shop. Five minutes later, I noticed a girl crying outside the shop with a man hugging. And there were two other women, and the man kept calling out to me like, Where's your mother? And I didn't say anything because I'm confused. And the girl went inside the nail shop. Then I see my mom outside the appliance shop telling me to go get her. But I was still super confused, so I got out, got my phone to record, and went to talk to the guy, who I realize is the main guy from the community. They said to me that my mom was stalking his daughter, looking through the window of the store. And I defended her because we literally have just been here 15 minutes. Also, the bank that both me and my mom use is right next to the nail shop. They said that they called the cops. I almost started crying. My legs were shaking. I go over to my mom, who's calling up the solicitors, and... Then I noticed that the main guy's massive-ass car is parked right behind our car, so we can't get out. Anyway, I calmed down in the appliance shop. Police came. They talked to the main guy and the two women, who I think one of them is the owner of the nail shop. They come over to us and say that my mom is under arrest 
for assault. The police said that my mom brushed or put her hand on the girl's, main guy's daughter, back. Anyway, I go to the police station with my mom. I'm actively writing this in the reception, and they're currently talking to her. They said that they have camera footage. I know that my mom wouldn't touch a random girl on the back because she herself doesn't like random people touching her. And also, I was in the shop when this apparently happened. We don't even know his daughter even worked there. And when I asked my mom if she made the appointment in store or by phone, she said in store because she went to the appliance shop yesterday, which is next to the nail shop. And I knew she did because she brought back a bunch of kitchen appliances. And later that night, yesterday night, she told me to set an alarm since she had a surprise for me tomorrow, which is today. I'm getting so sick and tired of this guy and his gang literally harassing us and making false claims about my mother. And we're actively selling our house because of it. We don't go anywhere. We currently have a massive lawsuit going on. We have no family or friends to rely on. And now these people are just making our lives worse. It just makes me really shocked that people have the nerve to go as far to not only purposefully target his friends, neighbors, gangs on us and make numerous false claims. Anyway, that was really long and I'm still sitting in the police station waiting. Thank you all and goodbye. The last time I'll put my input in here, I would have found someone to buy an illegal substance from and then planted it in his truck or on his property and then called the cops on him and see how he likes it. I know two wrongs don't make a right, but damn, an elderly woman, dude, that's the lowest you can go. Across the road from our front yard, we have an elderly neighbor. At every opportunity, he finds something to complain about, about how we manage our property. Number one, yelled at my husband this winter to take down the Christmas lights. Apparently, we're crazy for putting psychedelic lights on our garage door. It was one of those projectors where it has moving snowflakes. There's literally two other neighbors on the block doing the same type of thing. We ignored his yelling. Later, when he explained calmly, he's had eye surgery and could see it moving out of the corner of his eye while sitting in his living room. We removed it to accommodate him. My husband is a sensitive soul, though, and getting yelled at for the Christmas lights he was excited for on his birthday completely ruined it. Number two. During the heat wave last month, the neighbor caught my husband at the mailbox and felt it was a good time to complain about the handful of weeds in our landscaping. This hadn't been a priority for us since we have a baby on the way and have been focusing our efforts on making the baby's nursery ready. Plus, it's a heat wave. Nobody should feel obligated to pull weeds in 90 degree Fahrenheit, 70% humidity weather. Again, husband is sensitive and did some weeding. Number three, we planted two trees in our front yard. They're super tiny, literal sticks right now. We ordered them from the Arbor Day Foundation last year and thought they'd arrive much earlier second trimester versus third trimester. We quickly get them into the dirt so they don't die. Neighbor is complaining that A, he cut down his mature trees to get rid of the birds and our tree will bring more, and B, they're planted over our sewer line. We need to double check on the second claim. He could be right, but that's a problem we can fix next year. I'm still waiting or the left tree to throw a leaf out or something and prove it's alive. This brings us to today. 
We're out grocery shopping, almost home when we get a buzz on our ring doorbell. It's the neighbor. Come to complain about the bird feeder we had off of the edge of the porch for the past year. We let him know we're almost home. About a minute later, we round the corner and park. I am sick and tired of this neighbor being a complete asshole to my husband and intend to give him a piece of my mind since I'm finally here talking to him in the flesh. Today, he's complaining that our bird feeder is attracting hundreds of sparrows to his property, which are pooping and he's too old to be cleaning that up. For reference, the neighbor to the side of us has three bird feeders. Also, this bird feeder has been here for literally a year. We like it because we can watch the local woodpecker from our living room. I start telling him he's always got something to complain about, and I don't want to hear it anymore. This is our property. It's none of his fucking business. I'm pregnant. And none of these petty complaints matter at all right now. We can move the bird feeder, but I never want to hear from him again. We go back and forth a little bit. Apparently, the volunteer trees creeping up that give our side neighbor privacy. And they need to come out. He's a disabled veteran who has lived here 65 years, so he's always right about everything. He starts insulting us personally. Apparently, I just know everything, don't I? And my husband always has his hands in his pockets. He even takes it a step further to accuse my husband of never having a job and criticizes his plans to be a stay-at-home father. Bitch, please. I did not get an undergrad mechanical engineering degree and an automotive systems engineering masters to fall into your stupid gender role stereotypes. My husband doesn't make a lot of money, but he supports me in every way so that I can make enough for the both of us. The audacity to imply he does nothing is astounding, especially when how much extra work he had to do with me throwing up the first trimester, and waddling around during the third trimester. He also threatened to call the cops on me for having a fucking bird feeder, told me we're crazy, and he never had problems with the neighbors before us. That's funny to me because the kind-hearted souls who owned this house before us warned us this guy is a troublemaker. I told him we could move the bird feeder but I don't want to hear from him again. He drove away and told me to have a nice life. I told him to fuck off. We'll see if he sticks to that. He's 81 and I'm 30, so really all I have to do is outlive him. But I feel bad about this. I grew up with elderly neighbors to the sides of my parents' house, and my dad would help them out all the time. I'd plow the snow out of their driveways all winter. I was hoping we could have a relationship where we could once in a while, but he's just such an asshole. The other neighbors, who are nice, by the way, assure me that it's him, not me. Grumpy neighbor even got brought to court a few years ago for harassing the kids of a neighbor down the street. I just feel bad about all of this. I, too, am a sensitive soul, but I'm not going to take this shit. Vent over. Thank you for listening. I made a couple posts earlier on the neighbor Molly, who was parking her car in our neighborhood shared driveway, and it would block my exit. She did this several times, and I had to call or text her to move her car. It got to a point I just texted her to please park her car out of my way. Molly texted back, no problem. I thought it was all solved. Three weeks later, I see her in my driveway. 
As I am leaving, Molly starts texting me, telling me to never contact her husband, family, or friends, and she will seek legal counsel if I do. I immediately tell the HOA what is going on. That same day, she continues to text. I do not respond to her text. Later that night at 10 p.m., she shows up to my doorbell and tells me, I meant everything I sent in my text message. I just want you to know that. Good night. I did not allow the door either, but I could see her through the door camera. The HOA tells me to just document instances of her blocking my exit, and they will address it. The HOA was not interested in talking to her or her husband to see what the issue was. I think they did not want to agitate the situation more. One of the HOA board members told me he and other neighbors have had run-ins with her, and it's best to just give it space and time. I was in agreement with that. I ignored her. Next day, Molly texts me that she is going to get legal counsel. I also noticed she parked her car in front of my house on the public side of the street in the morning. She has not done this before. Last week, I parked my car in front of my house on the public side of the street for five minutes to grab something inside the house. By the time I came back out of the house, Molly was parked there next to my car in the middle of the public road. When I came to my car, she then drives off. After talking with my family, I decided to file a police report for harassment. The police tell me to continue documenting and reporting any more incidents. But there is nothing they can do because she has not technically broken a law. Yesterday, for the third time, her kid has come to my doorbell to ring it, then run off. I was resting then, and I'm startled, and my heart starts racing. Two out of the three times the kid did this. Molly and her husband were standing ten feet away. After the third time, I got the camera footage and reported it to the HOA. The HOA says that they are working on how to address the issue. One of the HOA board says this seems like a misunderstanding and suggests I should just talk to her. He worries if I leave it, it may fester and get worse, and would be willing to mediate if things didn't work out after I tried talking to her. I want nothing to do with this lady. I don't want to talk it out with her. That is what she has always wanted, to get me to engage with her. I said I would think about it, but only if other people were present. I will not talk with her alone. HOA is acting like I had some sort of relationship with this woman. I don't know her. Two out of three of the HOA board members have told me she had issues with at least three other neighbors at some point. I am not about to be the sacrificial lamb and get into a physical altercation with this woman. I don't want to do it, but if the HOA wants it, we can do it via Zoom meeting with the HOA board, Molly and myself. Let her tell us what is her problem. I think it is dangerous for me to engage any further with this woman. She gives out major stalking vibes. Last Tuesday, I came home from work and got settled in, starting on supper. When I realized, I had left my backpack and laptop in my car and went out to retrieve it. I have a rather deep driveway that goes alongside my house and often park rear in the back in front of the garage. I walked around the corner of my home and looked up to notice the neighbors in their yard and waved. But before I could react, I saw their 80-pound dog come sprinting at me. I turned away to try to go back inside, but within seconds, the dog locked onto my back, my muffin top, if I'm being honest, and I felt a searing pain as I heard him growling and felt the pull in my muscles. 
I kicked back to get him off of me, and he released, but I was already headed toward the ground. He then came back for more and bit and locked onto the back of my thigh. I was screaming and trying to crawl away when the neighbors came over and pulled him off of me and rushed him inside the house. It took a few seconds for me to get up, but my adrenaline had kicked in, and I immediately stated I needed to go to the hospital as I felt blood running down my back. The neighbor's response? He's already listed as a dangerous dog. If you go to the hospital, tell him it was a stray. If the cops find out, they will take him away. Uh, I neglected to respond to the request, and just said again I needed to go to the hospital. They hollered out that they would pay for my medical bills if I lied, but... I was in too much pain to pay attention to them. I ended up hobbling back to my car and drove myself to the ER. Once there, the doctors informed me that a dog attack needed to be reported, and I readily agreed, and a sheriff arrived in about 10 minutes. I explained the above story, and the cop indicated he knew the dog and the owner and would go to their house immediately. After getting cleaned up and treated, the officer returned and said they wouldn't come to the door, but they would try again in the morning, and I should try to get some rest. They called me the following day. The following morning, officers went to the neighbors, and they said they took the dog to Kansas, and we'd never see it again. Now, I don't know if others are aware, but there is a protocol for dog bites. After a bite, the dog is required to undergo a 10-day quarantine for rabies, holding and first offenses the dog is returned to the owners with the strict safety guidelines and rules to follow. The second offense varies, but the dog is either returned with further lines and restrictions or the dog is humanely euthanized. Because this dog had attacked many people previously, the sheriff stated the latter would likely be the case. Because I no longer trusted the neighbor after they asked me to lie to the cops, and then they tried to smuggle the dog away, I purchased a second security camera for that side of my home. Chastise me for not having one more, but I'm buying them one at a time because of my budget. They immediately called the cops to complain about my illegal surveillance, and the officers explained that the camera covered my property and was completely legal. Will matter shortly. Now, because the dog cannot be isolated for rabies quarantine, the State Department of Health got involved and called me to inform me that I needed to undergo rabies treatment and vaccination because they couldn't locate the dog and confirm it was healthy. Thus began the arduous process of a series of shots that had to start within 72 hours of the attack. So, I immediately went to the hospital to begin treatment. I communicated this to the sheriff on my case. Fast forward to later the next day, and the sheriff calls me to tell me they informed the neighbors about my mandated rabies treatment and the situation, and they admitted the dog had been hiding in their home the entire time, and they were upset about the cameras because they couldn't take the dog out at night to potty because the camera would catch them. The officer removed the dog, and I shall interject that I had no control over what the officers were required to do, took it to have its rabies tested. If you are unfamiliar with the process, the animal is euthanized and the body is sent to a lab for a neurological examination. Had they not hidden the dog, the need for me to get rabies treatment wouldn't have been mandatory and their dog wouldn't have been immediately euthanized. Now, it's been about a week and they are harassing me daily as I come and go from home. They have been trespassing in my backyard and screaming obscenities at me whenever I am outside. I have reached out to a lawyer, but I'm looking for advice on moving forward 
and getting them to leave me alone. The hospital has informed me my bill is nearly $12,000, and I plan to pursue them for that, but I'm not sure what else to do. Any advice would be appreciated. I've told this story a few more times, but nothing has changed and it's only become much worse. I am surrounded by NFH, left, right, and above. Things have only gotten worse by trying to talk to them about their constant noise, TV, music, stomping, moving shit for hours throughout the night, morning, and day. It does not end. I work from home and live with chronic pain due to injuries. I live with my 62-year-old dad, a dog, and a cat. I haven't slept in three days yet again. They are doing all of this on purpose. What's fun is it gets worse. I contacted the landlord who doesn't give a shit. She spoke to one neighbor and then left the country again. Not kidding. So, after nothing changed, I made her give me the number to our management. This is when I learned that our management is being sued for fraud, not in the same country, and, effectively, do not exist. So, what the fuck am I supposed to do? I literally can't sleep. I have nowhere to go. We cannot move. We make enough for rent, and that's fucking it. I haven't been able to work. No one cares. My dad's half deaf, so he is coping way easier than I. He is just annoyed at me now. Wants me to just ignore things that I shouldn't react. Me? I'm home literally 24-7. I'm quiet as fuck. I practically have headphones surgically grafted to my head because of growing up in a very loud, abusive environment. Now I'm being forced to have headphones on 24-7, or all I hear is thump, 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 voices, stomping, someone's TV, etc., etc. Today, the neighbor to my left, his daughters were playing their shit in the bedroom loud enough to be heard through full-volume music with soundproof headphones on. I can't take this shit. I hate living here. I always fucking have, and now it's actually hell. It's such a frustrating situation. No one will help. The police haven't helped. I have no way to legally protect myself or stop this. I cannot do what so many suggest and buy things to annoy them back with louder noise. I have a nine-year-old dog who I love more than anything. He is literally the only reason I haven't fancied my own wall with my brain yet. And then my 62-year-old dad, who will be tortured as well. So basically, everyone has told me to shut the fuck up and deal with it. And I tried. I fucking tried. I'm trying so hard to not stoop low and do some truly fucked up shit. God knows I want to. I hate these people. They play dumb when you talk to them. Go back inside and turn the sound louder than it was before. All I want to do is my work. Do my fucking online classes and raw dog this shit life without the addition of constant sound harassment. I'm a 27-year-old male, and I feel like I'm going to have a heart attack at any moment. I am constantly in fight-or-flight mode. I get maybe an hour of sleep. I just want to bash my head against the wall. I have zero support. I went through some pretty bad shit my whole life until I was 17. Now, I'm almost worse off mentally, anxiety worse than ever, depression, and migraines before all of this shit. Have it any idea how much your head hurts when you willingly blast music with headphones on all day? 
while having chronic migraines, I am seriously considering admitting myself into a mental hospital or some shit just to fucking not exist here. I don't know what else to do. I really don't. But the sound of that mental hospital and a secluded room with total silence is looking really good about right now. I'm not sure what to think anymore. As we've been told, we are the bad neighbors through all of these issues. We moved into our home in 2022, so we've been here a little over two years. Initially, all of the neighbors around us were very friendly and welcoming. They would invite us for future barbecues, offer to watch our dogs, and even invite us on their boat. We have two small dogs, and one of our next-door neighbors also has a small dog. When we moved in, we got one of those electric fences that isn't in ground, but emits a radius from a device inside. We found out that we had the same system as NDN, so we talked to him, and we both agreed it would be fine to combine the fences so all of our dogs had more room and could play with each other. This meant our dogs could go into his yard and his dogs into ours. This worked out very well for about a year. Last year, our next door neighbor's son, early 20s, moved back in with him. I would notice the dogs barking at him when they were outside, but never saw an aggression as they are not aggressive dogs. NDN never mentioned anything about the barking or any issues with our dogs. I was outside one day with our dogs when Indian's son came outside and our dogs started barking at him. He yelled at me, you need to keep your dogs out of our yard. This is the third time I've been bitten and your dog ripped my pants. Uh, I was surprised, but immediately went inside and told my husband. We immediately changed the radius of our electric fence so our dogs could no longer get into their yard at all. I also apologized to Indian's son and sent him money for his ripped pants. Again, they never mentioned any of this to us up until this point. If they had mentioned it earlier, we absolutely would have moved the fence sooner. After this incident, we ended up having a physical fence built in our backyard so our dogs could have room to run around. The new electric fence radius was maybe five feet, so they didn't have much room. The neighbors on our other side kind of took offense to us building the fence because they liked the open feel of our backyards together. They asked why we were building it, and we were honest and just said, our dogs and NDN's son don't seem to get along. Looking back now, I realized we should not have said this, but we weren't trying to be malicious or gossip by saying that. All of this happened about six months ago. Fast forward to now. We have had issues with NDN and his son driving through our yard. There is about a six-foot wide patch of grass between our driveways when they don't want to move one of their cars. They drive through the grass and out through our driveway. This has happened at least 10 times or so in the past two weeks. We also saw NDN's son moving dirt back along our fence and kicking it down our hill, which broke part of the fence. My husband was angry with these issues, so he texted NDN and confronted him. NDN said to come to talk to him like a man. So, later that evening, we went and knocked on his door. NDN came out and immediately got into husband's face yelling at him. Husband said, can you step back? You're being too aggressive. NDN said, get the fuck off my property. So, we went to our driveway. He followed us there, and husband came saying, Will you stop driving through our yard? And Indian said, 
I will drive through your yard whenever I want. I then proceeded to tell my husband he will knock his fucking teeth out. We made a police report, but asked them not to come out, so we didn't make things worse. What would you do in this situation? Oh yeah, a quick update. My husband came home from the driving range tonight as NDN and Sun were pulling in. We have ignored them since Sunday night when this happened. The Sun flips off my husband. Husband starts recording audio on his phone. NDN calls me a whore for being pregnant to my husband and then proceeds to tell us how we don't have jobs. Uh, we both do? And that mommy and daddy paid the down payment for her house. Is he kidding? They didn't do that. And because we are only 29 years old. We called the cops again to come out. We put up a no trespass order on neighbor and son. If they come into our property and we have proof, they will go to jail. If they continue to harass us outside and we get into it on video, we will ask for a no contact order. If anyone else has more suggestions or support, please feel free to let us know. And that, dear listeners, brings a close to these true neighbors from hell. Before I go any further, I would like to acknowledge the elite members of Back to Ashes. Cindy Cleveland, Patty's niece, Samantha Place, Call Me Carter, Corpse Lover, Stephanie McLaren, Chrissy Elias, Denise S., Tina Mee, Luz Crispin, Tammy Slayton, Anita V., Dova Khaleesi, Ada Smith, Amy Klimko, and Sugared Spite. Thank you all, as usual, for being the pillars for which Back to Ashes stands upon. I could not be more grateful for your support and to the subscribers and anyone else that has listened thank you so much for the support of the channel and myself for without you all i would not have a voice thank you if you are sleeping i hope slumberland is treating you comfortably if you're awake i hope you've enjoyed these selections until next time please take care of yourselves and stay safe out there i'll be reading to you soon have yourselves a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening. Peace, love, and light to you all.